ruling progressive, all progressive Congress seems to be doing everything possible to ensure a unity government is in place ahead of the swearing-in ceremony of President-elect Bola Metinubu on May 29th. In a strategic meeting in the heart of France, uh, President-elect Bola Tinubu met with Rabbi Kwanko, so one of his opponents in the presidential elections. Kwanko, who run on the platform of the new Nigeria People's Party, placed fourth in the election, winning only Kano State's a stronghold of the ruling All Progressive Congress. Uh, both men met for hours in Paris. The meeting was reportedly brokered by Kwankoso allies, Kwankoso's ally, Abdul Mumin Jabrin, who was formerly in Tinubu's camp. Uh, Tinubu reportedly spoke about the need to work together and plan the government of national unity. They have both agreed to hold subsequent meetings. So joining us now to discuss on the ruling party's quest for a government of national unity ahead of May 29th inauguration, is Prince uh, Mustafa Aldo of the All Progressive uh, Congress, Chifton. Great to see you again, and uh, how's it going, and gearing up. Uh, let's quickly talk about this meeting of national unity. I mean, what's your take on it? Is it the same political interest alignment, and what is in it for me, politics? Um, first of all, good morning, Rafai, and uh, good morning to the rest of the team, Ayo and Ruben. And uh, to all Nigerians, uh, it's important that um, as the winner of the just concluded elections, we must reach out to all other political parties. The task at hand is the rebuilding of Nigeria, rebuilding of confidence, ties, infrastructure. There's a tremendous amount of work to be done. Therefore, it's important that we reach out to all parties, especially people like His Excellency Kwan Kwaso, who um, was a fantastic governor in Kano State and who we know has capacity and competence. So having a strategic meeting with him, trying to align with him is good for Nigeria. Alignment with any other party, everybody that is willing to work hard hand in hand and critically has the competence to do so should be part of the, the task of rebuilding Nigeria. It's extremely important. So it's more than just political talks and ties. It's important. And I think um, action, as they say, speaks louder than voice. So you can see that um, His Excellency Asiwa Jibola Tinubu, the president-elect, and uh, God willing, our incoming president on May 29th, um, has shown that he's ready to reach out to all and sundry to work ha hand in hand with them to deliver a better Nigeria for all Nigerians. I believe Nigeria is about to go through a new phase of development, a new phase of economic prosperity led by someone who has vision, who has capacity. And um, that's what this is, reaching out to the best of the best. So in terms of reaching out to the best of the best, I'm not sure, I don't know if you know, if you're aware, Prince Aoudou, if the president-elect has reached out to uh, other parties aside the NNPP. I know initially, post-election he had. But in terms of forming his government, has he reached out to the Labour Party or the PDP, bearing in mind that they are both in court challenging his um, results or the results of the elections of 2023? Um, I think uh, the communication channels are always opened. He has stretched out the olive branch and um, the doors will never be closed to working hand in hand with those who have the interest of of Nigeria at heart. And I think that's what, what this shows. It's not just the Labour Party and the PDP that are in court. The NNPP is also in court as well. But you can see His Excellency Asiwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu reaching out. It's, it's critical to bring in all that, that have the intention to build a better Nigeria. So that's, that's what is, is, is important in this. So I believe that's what's going on. I believe if um, uh, Peter Obi or Atiku wanted to, to form a government of unity. There are a lot of Nigerians in the Labour Party and of the um, PDP extraction that have competence and we're open to working hand in hand with them to build a better Nigeria. There's nothing wrong with that. And as you can see, the legacy of uh, His Excellency Asiwa Jibola Tinubu has been to always pick people who have competence, who have capacity, uh, who have the ability to deliver. So that's very important. So even if we're going to work with Labour Party and PDP, it's those of them who have competence and capacity to build the, the renewed hope agenda for Nigerians to bring about economic prosperity. Because honestly, as Nigerians, we deserve a break. We deserve good leadership. We deserve quality education, quality healthcare. We deserve so much. And I believe that the time is right now. And the people that need to do the job um, will be selected from, from all around, everywhere. OK, Prince, I'll do two quick things. The first is, you know, your party at the moment is grappling with uh, party loyalty 
individual ambition, legislative independence, in terms of you know, the attempt to appoint or anoint or vote for you know, uh, leadership positions in the National Assembly. Where do you stand in that uh, spectrum? And then sometime last year, you and your wife were expelled or suspended from the progressive youth movement, which is a youth wing, you know, a wing you know, uh, within the APC. Have you been able to reconcile with the other members of that group who accused you and Madame of uh, misconduct? Just those two things. Um, first of all, uh, the suspension was a purported suspension by uh, unfortunately, other young people who are who have nefarious intents and are not interested in the progress of Nigeria and the progress of our party. So there's no such thing. Those people are not actually members of of the group. So at the end of the day, the important thing here is um, to focus on on the incoming um, leadership, to focus on on what is going to happen for Nigeria and to focus on progress. So anyone who is not interested in progress is always, would always be left behind. And uh, it's clear that you have people who have um, maybe negative intent, who, have, um, who are envious, you know? So you have a lot of young envious people as well who um, maybe have, you know, whatever agenda they do have, but they, I assure you that they have nothing to do with our group and they are not part of the group. Yes. And please, what was the first question again, if you no. can run that by me? Um, no, oh, yes. about the leadership. Uh, the, the legislative. Uh, at the end of the day, the party has a right to take a decision. The party has a right to, to look at a, a direction that it wants to go. And individuals, too, also have the right to contest. Um, if you see the APC, the APC was a coming together of various Nigerians with, with interest in moving the country forward. So this is all part of strengthening our democracy. At the end of the day, the votes will take place on the Senate floor and will take place um, in the House of Representatives. So therefore, it's critical that there's a lot of negotiations. There's um, a, a lot of, I guess, horse trading. It's important in politics that, you know, the conversation doesn't stop. So this is what that is about. There's nothing wrong with the party picking a position. There's nothing wrong with the leadership saying they want a set of people. But there's also absolutely nothing wrong with people wanting to, to contest and express their ambition. After all, the only way that um, we have our candidates who have all won and uh, yet are about to be sworn in is because they express their intention and ambition and desire to run against others, and, and they won. So competition also is good. It brings out the best in people. Therefore, um, I also encourage it. I think we encourage it in the party. And even as the party has taken a position, I believe that the House of Representatives members and the senators have gone to the party, expressed their displeasure, expressed their interest in, in more consultation, in more discussions. And even if they had to do, decide on a consensus candidate, it has to be by, by negotiations, not by okay. um, just giving a blanket order. So I think this is all part of strengthening the democracy of, okay. of things. But a lot of people will challenge that notion that there's nothing wrong. They'll say there's actually something wrong. And a la 2015, where the party had a position, was supposed to tilt towards Hak Midlawan, but all of a sudden, Bukola Saraki stole the show. And he stole, he stole the show in a very, you know, can I use the word, a very deft move in the, in the fact that some members were told to come to a certain area for a meeting. I remember that day like yesterday. <laughs> and he had gone to the parliament, conducted the elections. They were just coming from the meeting. At the time they got there, the elections were over. And it was already right there. And that really hurt the party. That hurt the party so much that I remember in 2019, Adams Oshobole had to say, we will never allow such a thing happen again. It is Lawan, it is Lawan. And we all saw how that happened. So are we not getting there again? As we speak today, you have big contenders like Yari that is going against Akbabio. If Yari makes his good inroads, and owing to the fact that the situation is different, you know, the majority is not strong this time around. What would you say, Ashra Gaza? And secondly, I'd like to talk to you about something I know is very dear to your heart, and I'll pick your brain on it. I'll be a little bit sentimental with you. Let's talk about Kogi politics a bit. I mean, I know your antecedents in, in Kogi politics. Uh, there's this brouhaha brewing between Smart Adeyemi and Governor Yaya Bello. You know, he feels he felt cheated 
in all of this? Well, what's your take as regards that Kogi politics conundrum? Okay, um, thank you, Rufai, um, for both questions. Um, first of all, uh, I'll take the first one. Um, there's nothing wrong with competition. In, in 2015, like I, I just previously mentioned, the APC was a coming together of, of different people. So we had many characters in, in 2015, and we didn't really understand each other. So where some people were being uh, thinking they were legitimately following instructions of the party and heading to the ICC, others, of, of course, had hidden intentions. and. That's what happened. They, they negotiated with the opposition. So I think that's part of the learning curve. And in 2019, we saw that that wasn't the case. And the actual decision of the party came through. So we are growing as a party. Again, we're facing that um, conundrum where uh, it's either we, we go with the decision of the party or the individuals that um, have an intention to run. Um, choose a candidate amongst themselves. So I think what the critical thing in resolving all of this is, is simply dialogue. Um, by communicating with each other, by negotiating, horse trading, uh, making, uh, I guess, uh, stepping down one thing or the other for, for each other. Uh, I think that's the whole part of politics and, and understanding each other. So it's, it's good on the one hand that the party has taken a decision, and it's also good that, you know, some people are saying they are not exactly happy with, with what's going on and they'll make a decision on their own. I know that um, not just um, um, Yari, I, I understand, um, his Excellency um, Oji Zokalu, um, uh, Distinguished Senator Sani Musa 313. So you have a lot of them, and you have to look at issues as well that, that are being raised. Pertinent issues, for example, um, the issue of the North Central, the North Central delivered um, four states, and, and the North Central doesn't really have any representation in the principal offices of, of either the Senate or House of Representatives. So these are per per pertinent points. Likewise, um, Oji Zokalu has the same point he's raising about the South is being carried along. So I think all of these things will contribute to a better set of leadership, to a better understanding, to knowing the issues that are at hand in, in Nigeria and how to tackle them, because the issue of inclusion is a critical one. Therefore, if the party, and what, what they're saying is that there are two of the, the four principal offices, there are two zoned to the northwest, and, and other zones are not carried along. So I, I think part of the dialogue, part of understanding each other, part of being able to build a stronger party and a better nation is the ability to take other people's um, issues into consideration, empathy. If you look at uh, that the APC, I don't think there's any party that has had um, as much rancor and infighting, yet there has been so much um, avenues for reconciliation, for working together, for being able to resolve issues and channels like that that are always open. So I believe that's what's going to happen. I believe that it will not come to an extent of, of deceit like what happened in, in 2015. I believe that the leaders are more interested in the success of the party and the success of the National Assembly and its ability to work with the executive is very important for the, for the progress of Nigeria. And then I'm um, going on to your question about Kogi State. Um, yes, uh, Senator Smart at AME um, feels, uh, I guess, um, cheated by, by his assertions. I, I wasn't in the country then when the primaries um, took place. But to be honest, um, everybody has a right to, to say what they feel. Um, being able to prove it in the in the court of law is, is something else. So if he has his evidence, he should he should proceed to court. Um, honestly, regardless of anything, I think that there are issues in Kogi State um, that you know once considered and taken into perspective, um, I, I think it will have a, a better a better stance for the party and, and for our chances of, of winning, especially given um, the Igala extraction, the size of the part, the, the tribe, um, and not being carried along, to be honest, um, and by the party. I think that's something that critically needs to be, to be addressed because um, the party um, has not really I guess, uh, interacted with, with all the major stakeholders, especially in, in Kogi State. So I think that's something that, that needs to be addressed and, and everybody should go into it with, with one house. And, and that's, that's what's most important. So uh, 
uh, I think there should be channels of, of communication, just like in the national, that there are channels of communication open to, to dialogue and resolving issues. The same channels of communication should be opened in Kogi State. And I know His Excellency Ayabello um, has the, I guess, best interest of the party at heart and wants the party to win. So in order to achieve this, you must carry all stakeholders along. You must make sure that the concerns of the critical stakeholders are uh, uh, addressed sensibly so that you don't have the lingering issues that we're having going to an all-important election where you're looking for his replacement and we're looking to to improve on everything in life you're always looking to improve so the APC is also looking to improve on its record as well so finding the the right set of people to to run things is, is extremely critical so and that can only be done through dialogue identifying critical stakeholders, being able to bring people of competence together. So there's a little bit of work to be done, uh, but I believe that he'll do it. He has, he has always done it. He has delivered several times and he delivered during the, the presidential election. So it's clear that he has the ability to de deliver elections. So um, being able to work with, with other parties should be um, at the critical um, aspect of things. Uh, it should be at the back burner as well. Um, especially, I think, for those from Kogi East who, who feel um, a bit neglected and, and as the population. Kogi West also don't feel as if they've had any leadership opportunities since the creation of the state. So I think there are things that need to be addressed. We're a tripod, so it's not good that just two legs of the tripod are, are standing, you know. So all of these things, and they can only be done through negotiations, planning for the future. There's a long future ahead of each and every one of us, God willing. Therefore, it's important that there's a, a long plan for, for our state, for our dear state. I, I mean, Kogi State has tremendous potential and, and the ability to be the best state in Nigeria, generating tremendous amount of income and revenue. So I think carrying critical stakeholders along will change a lot of things. Thank you very much, Prince Audu, for joining us on The Morning Show today. <laughs>